we'd use this example that blockchain is like a group text message. So we're all on this group text message. I have a name, you have a phone number. We're sending information, data. Sometimes it's a meme, it's a photo, it's an address. And in this group text message, there's 220 people, whatever. Every time I enter, that data gets exchanged. It's on a ledger. It's in that group text message. It makes so much sense. And so when people think of blockchain as a group text message, just because I delete it off of my phone, it still exists on yours, as well as everyone else in the group text message. So you've got a ledger, it's immutable, and it's distributed. It may or may not be public, it depends. I um, mean, you can have public chains and private chains, but at a high level, when you think of blockchain as a group text message, and you explain it to the old folks in government who don't even use email, uh, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then it really drives home when I say, I have uh, 10 bucks, I give you five, and you give someone three. Now, everyone sees in this group text message, Samson only has $5. You had five, but now you only have two because you gave this other person three. And that's how that ledger of accounting system works. And so you can't go back and change it. It's immutable, it's distributed. Oh my goodness, blockchain is just like a group text message. Interesting. See, and that's the thing. I feel like you're coming at it at a good angle. You're, you're not addressing the accusations or the, the implications that currently exist with today's perception. You're rather you know, explaining a technology to them where if they were able to understand it, they would realize that, listen, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't just enable these sort of devices and these sort of practices. Like, here's a whole world of applications and start thinking about them.